this little, there we go. Okay, call to order the uh, parking, what is the back? back Last time there was another meeting playing. Yeah. Oh. I think we're good now. Uh, roll call for um, Jill. Commissioner Lud Graychuk. Here. Commissioner Laura Greenley Carp. Here. Commissioner Larry Amsden. Here. Commissioner Heather Haas is absent. Commissioner Ingrid Kohler. Here. Commissioner Sue Springborn. Here. Commissioner Nancy Thorson. Here. Commissioner Sarah Zaradka. Here. Commissioner Artie Alvarez is absent. Council Member Tim Cole. Here. And myself. Okay, we got an agenda. Or we got a quorum. Adoption of the <laughs> adoption of the both. agenda. I make a motion to adopt the agenda. There makes a motion. Second. I'll second that. Nancy seconds. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Approval of the October twenty sixth minutes. Motion. I'll make a motion. Okay, Ingrid makes a motion. Second. I'll second it. Two seconds. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Approval of the September 28th minutes. Motion. I make a motion. Laura makes a motion. Second? Second. Make, who? Sarah? Sarah. Sarah makes a second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Meeting open to the public first. Is there anybody on Zoom before I forget? Allow them to talk. Would you like to say anything, Stephen? Um, no, I don't have too much to say. Just here to uh, see what happens with the um, community yeah, garden. Here in chat, if he wants to. Well, I found out if he has anything to say, we can move to those in the okay. council. Okay. We'll just jump in. Okay. Anybody else from the public like to speak to the to the commission? Come on up. Yep. You're welcome. Just put your name. Just state your name for the record. Ooh, yeah, this is Ben Jarman, and I live at 2460 Skillman Avenue East. Well, welcome. Thanks for having me here. It's my first time here, and uh, I recognize a lot of you, so um, I'm glad to come up and speak with you about community gardens. Now, um, there was uh, some hoopla when um, the the Cowan Garden disappeared, um, I don't know, a year or so ago, and um, there's been some more talk now about getting a community garden going or going somewhere in the community. Um, something big, something hopefully free that people that are really enthusiastic about gardening could come in, grab a plot and watch it take off. You see it in all sorts of other towns. Let's get one going here. Now, I am no gardening expert. Uh, I make my mom come over to my house and garden. <laughs> However, I am fortunate enough to have neighbors that are incredible gardeners, incredible. Um, Sue, right in the back, she has the mask on. She uh, was at the city council meeting, I believe a week or two ago, to speak about uh, getting a community garden here. She lives re right behind me. And um, yeah, my mom comes over to garden, but I also um, get a lot of my gardening vibes from Sue. I can basically look over her fence and every single year since I've lived here, I feel like it's been about 20 years now, every single year, um, you know what it looks like on 4th of July at night um, with the lights and the explosions and the, and the color, right? That's what her backyard looks like in the daytime. <laughs> um, and Sue, Sue's work is now expanding. It, she's, she's done her boulevard over and it's completely now been gardened. In the whole place is out there. At nighttime, she's out there gardening. Her whole family's helping out all the time. And um, 
I think one of the things that you probably need um, if we're going to do something like this in the community is to have some uh, have a leader um, in some way kind of maintain and make sure that everyone's pulling their weight at the garden. If you have a plot, um, you know, you want to make sure that, you know, you're being fair to the to your neighbors that have other plots there. And um, I'm not I'm not putting you in that spot, Sue, but I'm saying Sue could be a really good uh, sort of uh, mastermind behind all of that. Um, she's passionate about it. And like I said, um, her garden just explodes in, in our neighborhood over there by uh, Cowern. Anyway, um, I've got some of my other neighbors here as well, and they are avid gardeners as well. They put me to shame. So um, I think just with the talk in my little bubble and my inexperience with gardening, um, I can tell you right now that there's passion in, in, in my little pocket of the community. Think about those pockets that are out throughout North St. Paul that are really into this kind of thing and could let it b just burgeon and be a great thing for the community. So thank you um, for considering a community garden and uh, have a good night. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, Anybody? Can we ask questions? Or yeah. Anything? Yep. Sure. Yeah. Okay. You want me to come back up? Yeah. Yeah. Come back. Time? I don't know much about gardening, though, guys. Oh, can we respond? I don't remember. I don't remember. Sorry, we're just having can a we little... Ingrid, it's okay. I think it's okay. Thank you. Um, it's, on the, it's on the agenda. Okay, great. Just um, wanted to make sure. So we'll open it up to questions. Yeah, good point. I, I have a question about... Um, you know, we Unless... Really into it. Remember this, yep, yep. and um, but there was no sort of succession plan. Like if he moved out of town, mm. you know. So our concern was always. Um, I think it's a great idea, and I think it's a wonderful community building thing. And it's you mentioned that it was a street, but a question about that. What does that mean? Does it the produce is free, it's or do you mean to to have a plot? Is have a plot. Yeah. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, I think that was one of the issues that was keeping people out of the Cowan spot. Um, was the cost, but um, I there's a lot of reasoning behind why we, why you would pay something. But at least to get something started, um, I think uh, water would be an issue too. If 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 there's a pipe that's out in any of the spots that are being considered, things like that, uh, shed. Um, so there there are, are dollars involved, but um, it's just one of the things that uh, a planning committee. Uh, would need to take a look at. But I digress. Um, the expert gardener is here today, so um, I believe she'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. And I'll just kind of like shadow her, see if that's okay about you. Would you like to come up? Yeah, come on up. Thank you so much, Patty, for saying such oh, yeah, great yeah. things about me and my friends. Sure, sure. <laughs> just state your name and your address, please. Okay, my name is Sue Zhang, and my address is 2469. Flyer Avenue East. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you told city council? I wasn't even there when this happened. I just uh, uh, told them that uh, we have a lot of people that are living here now. As you can see, the new neighbor right there, he also on the Skillman. Skillman, Skillman. And uh, him is, uh, yeah, that's a gay hoja. So he he's on Ivy. Ivy. Go ahead, number three. Two, one, four, four. Two, one, four, Ivy. So we have a lot, uh, some more people that are interested. So the, uh, so I came to city council meeting to ask them to sit for them to give us land. There's more more people. Oops. Uh, um, to see if they would consider in the future, like next year, next summer, also um, to give us land to plant 
because we love uh, we we love to eat our food, you know, uh, and we also love to be out there to to work on in the garden to be healthy, yeah. And so um, and also we would also like to consider to give out some free food, some free produce for the local food bank as well, oh, great. On the food shelf too. So the reason why I was here because of all these people and there's more that um, they raised the concern that we want a land, we want a place where we could, uh, you know, like plant something. And because some other cities, they have given free land and uh, for, for their, you know, residents to plant stuff. And so like St. Paul, City of Afton, City of Woodbury, you know, some other places they have given land for the um, for whoever is interested and it's free and it's also they provide uh, soil they provide water um, and wood chips and some other stuff too so that's why I thought we thought maybe we could come here and ask the of North St. Paul because we have I live here almost 30 years and he also lived here for so many years they live uh, they just moved in but they live here so many years as well and Ben, they've been here for 20, so. So if we moved forward with this, would, it, would at the time, appropriate time, we set up a plan as to how this is gonna lay out leadership, and we could work with uh, whatever zoning we have, if we're gonna put a shed in, and how we're gonna get the water there and so forth, so we could come up with a plan together? I would, I would think we would have to have some we ultimately are the experts in that situation. I think that you're asking us for the space. Yes. And we would need to figure out the management, logistics, all sorts of stuff. But she was talking about leaders, like leaders well, that ran that. Yeah, I think, I think we would be, have to say, in order for this to happen, we would need to put mm -hmm. this in place. And I'd love to see some of these other cities, you know, Woodbury and, you know, I would love, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I would love to see one of these projects that's really working and everyone's happy and the city's happy. You know, I would love to see the, that model because I think we could learn a lot from that and find out whether it would work here. Yeah, and I, in my daytime role, had um, helped manage the Collin Garden that they were referencing mm -hmm. that uh, got taken down. And it was part of somebody's job to, like, oversee it. Um, maintain it to also then like assign plots and uh, go and check on it weekly take out the compost bin um, and it's it's a lot of work so I'm def I'm pro community garden but it, as we were saying there needs to be a plan because it's more than just like maintaining the space it's like the people management Mm -hmm. So whatever we do, I want to make sure that we do it well mm -hmm. um, and just make sure that we're thinking through all of that. And then I had a question about the location of the garden. So you all are in like your own little pocket, right, over by Northwood Park? Northwood Park. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Park, kind of. um, I live over there, but, you know, I don't know where, where you have the land. Well, that's what was going to be my question. Is it uh, location dependent? Like you all wanting to do this, would it have to be? close to you, or there, could it be like in the city of North St. Paul? In anywhere? the city of North St. Paul, anywhere. Okay. Yeah. Tim, question. Since we're turning it into a garden, did anybody talk about possible zoning issues? No, no. this is still planning. And Sue, thank you for coming tonight. Um, you're a phenomenal spokesperson for what, for what you're wanting to get done. Um, in presenting to city council, you got a lot of positive head nods and we strongly encourage you to show up tonight. So th thank you for coming. Um, the, the council did identify country, country club park yes. as a potential location. Um, it's not a large square footage, but it kind of fit within the parameters of what you started, um, or had stated there's a lot. And we talked about it too, during council, there's a lot we have to learn. Um, and it would be of my guidance to um, come back for the park and rec to start to talk through these things to make to, a lot of this a lot of the questions that we have now um, it's new to us 
you're you're the expert. Um, so we have a lot to learn, and, and as um, one of the other commission members had referenced, let's figure out what the other cities are doing to make sure that we're not, you know, recreating the wheel and starting over. Um, but I, but I, I believe you've already got council support behind what you're looking to do. I can't speak for all of them. Mm -hmm. um, so now it's, it's, it's fact-finding and determining what we need to do. And there's snow on the ground, so we've got a little time. Right. Um, to, to get through it, but, but to your point, we talked about the need for water, the need for maintenance, how do, we, how do you divvy up the plots, what are the plot sizes? So there's a lot of learning that we have and would love to use you as a reference. Um, my sister-in-law, um, she lives in Afton, and my, um, my other sister-in-law, they also live in Woodbury. So Afton and Woodbury, I think they have um, a plot. They have it in this area where they gave it to and, uh, and I've seen my sister-in-law's plot, you know, in Sevilla after, and they, they fenced it. They fenced pretty good so that the, uh, you know, like the, mm -hmm. the deer won't get into it, but, um, but lots of bunny got into their stuff <laughs> because they didn't um, put it in, like, chicken wire and stuff to, to keep the bunny out. But, you know, everything is really flourished out there because my sister-in-law, um, they invite us to go and pick uh, some stuff really nice so um yeah that's uh, that is what i kind of like yeah mm -hmm. any more questions any more questions it's like the next step for us is to just look into it and, mm -hmm. and yeah. study some of these other plans and reach out to us and we'll be able to take a look at you know um yeah yeah improvements. yeah i could uh, you know if you if any one of you wanted to visit in the spring I could talk to my sister-in-law and maybe take you to the Afton mm -hmm. group, uh, you know, um, gardening to see it. But because they have, they have uh, white folks, they have Asian folks, they all, all combine to come and do that little area, and which is really friendly. It's really friendly and nice. Yeah. Contact information. <coughs> You're done. Yes, yes. Did you sign in on the back? Uh, maybe you already did that. The last time I, uh, I gave it out, but if you still want my information, I will uh, leave my information. Yes, definitely. Yep. That would be great. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Any other questions? Thank you, Sue. You're welcome. And uh, so what do I, where do we go from here? Like, uh, you would just contact me then? Or yeah, someone it, will contact me then? Yeah, I, it's... More of a process than mm -hmm. um, us chatting and saying, yeah, like let's do this, we can move forward. We it's on our agenda to talk about it, um, but that's just like the beginning part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to, you know, talk about it. Uh, we would have multiple meetings yeah. um, and figure out what we need to do next, and then we can come back to you and say, hey, this is what we're thinking. This is what we think we need. So, but I just want to. Um uh, mentioned this too because when uh, when they started the uh, the, the Cowan um, gardening area, I also went and and talked to them and to and, and visit too. But it's only ten by ten and that's for thirty dollars. Ten by ten, it's like my husband said, you just plant a few pepper plants and there are a couple tomatoes and that that's it. You know, ten by ten is you can't do anything with that with that little land. So if we're gonna get something, we would like to get. A few times more than ten by ten, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Land availability is the hard thing. Yeah. There isn't a lot of land left in North St. Paul that isn't developed. Like I'm thinking of the Maplewood site, where it's like big, vast over on like County Road C and by the fire station. By the fire station, like that's a lot of land. Um, we we just don't have. Could at least like get like maybe forty, twenty by forty or forty by forty somewhere around there. You know, for per per plot per person. Because 10 by 10, you, you can't do anything with it. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. And that country yeah. club space is real long and narrow versus wide. Mm -hmm. It has a little bit of a slope yeah. there, I think. Oh, uh, slope is fine. Slope is fine for us because we, uh, we used to live in Laos where there's hill yeah. up and down. <laughs> a little slope is the, the slope <coughs> of what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anybody else? 
want to stick around, we're going to talk about it in, during the meeting. But okay, thank you, Sue. Um, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Sue. Thanks for coming back. Anybody else in the public like to speak? Okay, no public hearings. Then we'll jump to co the community garden. Uh, I can start talking. Yeah, you just... Right, yep. Go ahead, Laura, you wanna? Okay, so. You, you, um, you seem to be the expert in it. Yeah, so Country Club Park is on page 16 of your Parks and Rec plan, if you I know want to see a from. picture of it. Um, <laughs> like Bad I students over here. in my daytime role, I help to oversee mm, the community long. garden. They are absolutely an asset in our community and something that a lot of people are very passionate about. And in the same vein, a lot of people don't understand how much effort goes into maintaining a community gardening space. Um, and a lot of people don't understand um, how quickly it goes downhill when the like community champion leader person who got it started goes away. Um, so those are two really big things. And uh, the, the maintenance that goes into it, um, the person who oversaw the gardens was there like three times, two to three times a week on their own time, checking in on the garden, um, like I said, uh, making sure that the weeds and stuff were taken care of, uh, making sure that the tool shed and everything was um, taken care of as well. And um, it, yes, it is a lot of, it is a lot of work. And so I don't, I personally don't believe that that's something that we could do for free just because we need to have somebody overseeing it. Mm -hmm. Like it's their actual responsibility. Yeah, not yeah, I think role. that's how you, yeah. Um, so I definitely trying to keep it affordable is the, the way to do it, but I don't, I can't see a way that it would be free. I'm also, I also um, learned that there are different types of gardeners. Um, some people want a very large plot some people want just a 10 by 10 plot because that's what they want to maintain. So even within the garden, there needed to be a variety of different spaces um, for the people that wanted to <coughs> garden in it. Um, we also experienced a lot of theft uh, with from the tool shed, um, both mm. people breaking into it and tools not being maintained. So there's like a, I don't want to sound like a negative Nancy. I truly believe that community gardens are an asset or something that are really important. We also need to find ways to like make it work and sustainable. Mm -hmm. And I also know that our city staff is already like really stressed out. <coughs> yeah. So putting something like this on their plate um, might be difficult at the time. Mm -hmm. Those are my only thoughts. Anybody else? I kind of agree with, I think, Maybe the first step is reaching out to Maple, knowing, well, that's a church-run garden, but um, a couple things. Like, could we could we partner with, like, a church group or something else in the community that's a little bit more longer standing that could help us run this, that might have volunteer staff that could help oversee this? And two, I think the first step has to be reaching out to Maplewood, Oakdale, whoever, other cities that have these and understand, is it city staff? that is actually staffing this or is it another organization? I'm even thinking like Rotary or something else that might have a interest in the community that could actually help kind of run this on a volunteer basis that isn't the park board or something else um, or citizens that may come and go. That would be my thought. I agree. I think community gardens are really important. I think we'd have no idea what to do with that country club space. The one thing I would say about country club is that we have to be considerate of the fact that there's neighbors and if, if 15 people show up on a nice day, the parking and everything else, like yeah. mm -hmm. the other thing I would suggest is as we talk tonight about the future of our parks and what we're doing, we've, we've commented on a lot of spaces that may not be getting as much use like softball fields or things like that. And my other thought would be like, as we think about what are we gonna do with those, like knowing we have public lands, like will we ever take some of that space and maybe turn that into a community garden where it's maybe not butting up right against somebody's house. Um, then my, my only concern besides the 
proximity to somebody's house. Because if that was my house, I love community gardens, but I would feel a little remiss if I was all of a sudden one day I've got like 80 people outside my house. Um, when I had no, no one there before, that person is going to be here. I don't know who they are, but they're going to be here probably complaining about it day one. Um, would be the selection because my guess is that these parks are so in demand. We're moving a lot of apartments in where people don't have space to garden. How do we prioritize? Like who gets priority in these spots? Who are you grant? Are you, do you get like renewal up every year when you come back? My, that would be my other thought is like, let's say we've run out of plots and this is maybe further down the road, but something I would be considerate of is like, how do you designate, I don't know how this works, but how do you designate it? Because to me, I think it would be important for people who own no land to have spots to garden, but I, I don't know how you prioritize that too, um, especially if we're saying we're not going to charge for this or whatever the case may be. I, I, I don't have experience, but those would be my thoughts and concerns. Tim, when you had, I don't know if you had much of a discussion at the um, city council meeting, but did you come up with any other areas in North St. Paul that might work besides Country Club? That was the original spot given just because of it's open space right now. It's not it's not really being utilized for anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of plans going forward in the, in, in the park improvement plan. Um, as far as what that space could be used as. So that was the, that was the first space that, that came up. Okay. It might not be the space, but it was the first, the first space that came up. Um, and the council didn't have a whole lot of answers. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's new to, to all of us, so it's going to be a learning curve. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, my recommendation and guidance would potentially be put a small committee together and then work with, um, you know, work with Jill or somebody um, on staff and then, you know, get a hold of somebody from, from Public Works and collaboratively think, of, have, think through the whole process first um, as, and, and reach out to the other communities. But first have a list of all these awesome questions that you guys are, are coming up with up here because I don't know if there's any one of us sitting here that could – really give we can give you a, a what we think answer but nobody really has any de definitive direction or guidance but, but every one of these issues we know has come up in exactly gardens. So yep I, i'm all in favor of like and i, I you know exploration is probably our first step yep okay. and and i love the idea of of can we find a sponsor can we have you know somebody else that would that would help um and then everything else plot sizes and water and you know, that's public works would come into play. I don't know what ground, I don't even know what kind of condition the ground is in to start with. Are there, are there grants? There must be yeah. gardening I'm, grants, uh, you know, government yep. grants for this kind of thing. Um, so one would maybe want to look into that too. <laughs> Not that I want to look into that. <laughs> Sounds other, like a mystery to me. The other spot I was thinking is we have big plans for Northfield Park. That's over in this pocket where um, yeah. community yeah. members Yeah. The other thing I just occurred to me, um, so when you're talking about Sarah over there on, what's that, Hannibal or Green or Green or whatever? The one by the fire station? Yeah, it's associated with the church. Church, yeah. We have some spaces like that that are not public ground. Don't the city and church have a huge amount of area there? I wonder if they would ever consider partnering. I think that's an option, too, if people know people within that church community or something. But maybe it's reaching our hands out to see first if we divide a subcommittee for this to yeah. look into that. Mm -hmm. I definitely think it's something that we should dedicate time to. I feel like this is a, I feel like gardening should be a part mm -hmm. of our overall, like, consideration as we're redoing our park and we're putting all forward. Do you guys make sure all your mics are white, too? Well, no, it's uh, me. I'm the problem. It's me. Mine is. I didn't have mine on. Um, yeah, I think a committee that talks through and does, like, checks out grant opportunities um, and 
talks to other cities that have it so that we can bring that education piece that Tim, Tim was talking about back to the committee so we can start having some of our own answers be a good next step. Do we want to figure out that committee right now? Sure. Yep. Or do we need to do that tonight? Yeah, we can set yeah, up. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, we, we should set up the committee tonight because then we can put it on old business or reports from staff each yeah. month. That way it'll keep going every month in the agenda or on the agenda. So anybody interested? Uh, I'll be on that subcommittee. Okay. Yep. Laura? I will. I Laura. will. As long as Laura's on. Yeah, I'll be on it. <laughs> yeah, we can research that. Yes. 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 Didn't you run, arm twisting didn't over you there? Didn't you run North St. Paul Green? Yeah. Pretty much? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, Jill, then we'll just put it as reports from staff every month until we get the whole thing resolved. And then that, that way it'll be on the agenda. We won't. It won't. <coughs> Thanks. And then, you know, to, to address some of the other concerns that came up of, you know, how's how's the neighboring community, the neighborhood community going to react? I mean, these are things that once locations have, have been determined, once a whole lot of the vetting has been, and the process has been done, um, then you can have a community meeting. You can have, you know, the, the same thing that we, same thing that we've done when we took a look at, you know, what do we want to do at Housie Park or what do we want to, so those, you know, the community meetings can, take, can then take place as well. Mm -hmm. Anything else on the community garden at this point? All right. B, next projects. Everybody bring their homework. <laughs> I'm just going to open it up to uh, whoever's got ideas as to where we start based on our uh, our, pl our plan. What is what is the next thing on our plan? Well, I believe we were going to work through, this was going to be the meeting that we were going to spend a lot of time walking through all the projects for 20, prioritizing yeah. and tackling the 2023 list, plus shifting and adjusting anything we had had on that short-term list. Is that list in this? Package? No, it was a separate. It was a separate form, and I forgot it. <laughs> a Google form. Uh, well, I can, well, I can give you an idea of what I put in the packet. Um, the last page will be like our implementation plan. So it was put in the park improvement plan. There we go. Short term. Where? Um, Short term. Last that. page. Right. Park prioritization. So the park signs are done. Um, the Rotary Park sign is almost done. Uh, we can't hear you. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I think I just need to talk yeah. louder. I'm mic'd up and everything. Um, park signs are done. They're ordered. They'll be Woo. next next uh, spring. Uh, Rotary Park sign, working on that now. That should almost be done. Housie, uh, WSB has just finished with the plans. We're going to be um, presenting that at the next council meeting. And then if that's good to go, then that will be in process of getting bids. So I'm hoping next spring on that one. So then that brings us up to Polar, which we kind of talked about. You guys sort of deprioritize that one. Um, so if you look at the short term, what we have left are the downtown McKnight, and you can see the list there. So what was the last thing you just said? Um, so the, after that, you can see the last five that we still had in short term. Um, the page before that, I just included a, a map of the parks, it's visual. Um, before that is the page that was from the capital improvement plan. Um, to kind of see where they had funds already dedicated for this. So what I wanted to really point out, um, our park signs were actually paid for out of the general fund. So that's weird. That's okay. I'll come. Um, I'll come up here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that'll, Are microphones that'll, that'll on. Help. Are the speakers on? Um, let's see. Can you hear me now? Can you can you remind us where we are in the yeah. A little better. I'll just yell. I'll, I'm going <laughs> to tell us 17 in, in tonight's packet. Last, last two pages. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm, lo I'm looking at this one. It's super small, so you probably won't, you won't see a whole lot. 
Um, so the park signs were actually paid out of a general fund. So that didn't come out of our park fund. Okay. So I mean, that's great, but cool. are we going to get charged back for it? No, nope. it comes oh. out of a general fund. So they moved that money over there and paid for those, along with the rotary sign. Um, and then, like, the first, uh, the first line is actually planning for McKnight Field. That's coming out of a general fund also, not part of the park funds. And um, does that mean we, like, our oversight or recommendations are no longer being considered for that? Like, is it a council decision because it's coming out of the general fund? No. No, it okay. would just be kind of the, the start of the planning process. Got it. So that's paid out of the general funds, too. Okay. So can I just clarify? You were saying general funds. We used to have, like, a park fund and then, like, a park dedication fund. Now right. this is something general fund is, it's like, the, the city. city. It's mom and dad's checkbook. It's the city. Got it. It's the, <laughs> that's what yeah. I thought. I yeah, it's the sure. city's general fund. <laughs> Free money. Free money. Free money. Great. Free money. Not our money. Good. Okay. Um, and I'm having trouble reading this, too, because there's another one. Um, so what Dan was saying is like, look at the 2023 and we can kind of work with that. There's also, um, Irrigation and then system. housing is also in for 2023. Yeah. That must yeah. be the general yeah. fund. Yeah. yeah. Irrigation yeah. system. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we talked about that last time. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. We did ask, we did ask if it was possible to add a column, um, to the spreadsheet so that they could notate if it was coming out of the general fund, the park fund. Right. So and it's, it's, there is and a it's column that lists what it's coming out of. Now, now it's, yeah. Yeah. What, what's missing is the, oh, is the detail yeah. behind it. Okay. So yeah. where you see McKnight Field Master Plan, you can see that it's spread out over four, over four years, three investments over four years. That very well could just be straight up maintenance that's being put into the general fund, whether it be exchanging of light, changing the lights out, could be, okay. I don't know exactly what, that funding is set up for. Right. Um, so there's stuff on here that the park and rec has never seen. Yep. Because it's a lot of the maintenancey stuff that needs to be budgeted, but it's never been never been brought you know never been brought to our attention until um, we put the plan together. Yeah. Got until it. financial director Winnick put it put everything together on one page. Yep. And then the page before that is what we did back in May um, at one of the meetings. Kind of went through a prioritization of the parks and what you want, we're gonna work on. So with that information, maybe that'll kind of kick off the conversation on what you wanna do. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Well done. All right. Okay. We're open to, uh, do we wanna just keep prioritizing what we got in the short term or do we wanna move short term to midterm? Do you, well, let's do ourselves a pat on the back and check off that we have park signs and the Rotary Park sign is done like we've already Things started. Things are happening. Things are happening. And and Housie's going to be done before Housie December's be over done. with. What? Housie's going to be You're working on housing? Yeah, no, they're going to get it approved. Oh, oh. oh you get it approved oh, by like, council. Yes. Okay. So Polar is next, but we talked about deprioritizing that. Yeah. So downtown park. This is just getting the plan for them to work up yeah. space. I think that's important. I think you guys know where I'm going to shut up about it. You know where I think. But I think if we need to get them started on a plan of like what locations are available, what can we do with it, I think it's important to get that going as quick as possible. Yeah, and, and that, again, is going to probably require committee work, yeah. joint, joint groups, because you got you I got think we divided involved, out a downtown committee you've got others you've got others involved that you're probably gonna all have to align on I think we divided a committee I'm on it just planning on it like a cross commission oh not a cross commission a park like a sub commission yeah yeah, yeah. I'm 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 making an assumption I don't know if yeah. that's a fair assumption I think there was one. There but was a subcommittee created. yep to see what it looks like, and then you'll just kind of need to start bouncing it off others to, to, in all honesty, to gain support. Yeah. And approach the city to find out what properties are available. Or we buy, or we buy property. Yeah, because that's kind of the main problem. That's the hang up. Right yeah. Now. Yeah. Well, I'm fine doing a cross commission, but at what point, who orchestrates that? Like if we say, okay, here's two people from the park commission. We, we need 
a person or two from the planning commission or whatever, how do we orchestrate? Go to the planning commission and present. Okay. Would be my would be my guidance. When do they meet? Are they am meeting I, in I, December? Am I, am, I, am I steering them down the right direction, Brandy? Am I am I too deep already? <laughs> Come on, it's day seven. <laughs> well, my question, Tim, is like, does the work from whatever the costs of this master plan need to start before we like, if we start getting all these commissions involved, is that too deep before this planning document, or do we need to all be aligned before this planning document goes out? Or get started. It depends on your definition of planning document. Master if it's plan. bullet pointed in general, I, <laughs> I would say it, it's 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 fine to live here. If you're looking to put ten thousand dollars against a piece of paper against something, before you, I, I would look, I would be looking to gain support from council and, and other commissions along along the way. Um, you know, I. You know what? Again, what is the investment to hire someone to come find space? What is what, what is the what is the expenditure to cover? So, okay. Um, is I, does that still apply if it's already on designated parkland? Like, if there's part of, if McKnight Fields becomes our downtown park. Do we still have to do that cross commission uh, work that you're talking about? Uh, I would say some yes, primarily no, because it's already a park. So to clarify, it's the cross commission planning that needs to happen if we're looking at somewhere that isn't a park, like creating a brand new park. There isn't a downtown park today. So you're going to have yeah. to, if, you're, if, the, if it's truly going to be a downtown park, you're going to have to find property someplace. Well, I, it, if it's like on 7th Avenue or Street, whatever, is that what you mean? Like actual downtown North St. Paul? Yeah. Yeah. Def uh, my okay. question, then, you know, then I go back to define downtown. Well, and that was my question about McKnight. And so that parklet that's being created that already um, bet next to Sidewinders okay. Who oversees that? Uh, that's on hold right now because there's an interested party in purchasing the land. The Parks Commission? Who, uh, would they, to turn it into a business? Mm-hmm. Okay. So then you got land down the road. There's that land. Okay, how about this? Um, I can't do December, but could we make a plan to go to Planning Commission the first meeting in January, New Year, fresh start, and me and whoever else is on the commission because I wasn't there when we designated who it was, I got added to it, which is fair, because I've been the one talking about this for 17 years. Um, can we just make a plan to go there and just get see where the interest lies? Because it's the Planning Commission, maybe they have ideas about space or thoughts um, that might help us with this, just to before we go down the path of plans or anything like that. And I'm happy to go to that meeting and speak with some with by myself or whatever. Could I? Jump in. And yeah. Yes, please. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Brandy. How can you guys hear me? You can. Okay. Um, I I just started officially last week with the city um, as community development director. Um, I was with WSB before that. So just in, in terms of this <laughs> um, conversation, maybe could we just back up a couple of steps so I could get a better understanding of what 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 the goal is with the with the broad goal is of downtown park planning. I'd be happy to talk on that. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, look at the time. Yeah. yeah. How much time do you have? Well, okay, or, or yeah. maybe. <laughs> no, so the short of it is we're building a lot of housing in and near downtown North St. Paul. We're building another complex soon. We're, we're moving a lot of people in here. We have no green space for them. Um, back when we used to have an open lot on 7th, it actually was used quite a bit during Friday night car shows. There's just a severe lack of things that are family friendly in downtown North St. Paul. So part of this is that we want something that, in my thought, should be iconic, idealistic. It doesn't have to be a big space, but something that kids can play in, people can bring their dogs to. 
we just we have a lot of population moving in here and no space to spread them out um, or at least have something that's child friendly. My example has always been I bring my five year old to downtown North St. Paul and they're going to trash the antique shop. Now we have Max, which is nice. They can trash that. But um, there's no place for them to run out some energy. And my thought behind this was always we didn't need a lot of space, but maybe we could build an iconic snowman themed shaped mm -hmm. playground that's tall. It's something that you look at other cities, you're like, this is their iconic playground. However, it's accessible when we have events downtown. It can be utilized by all the residents from the townhomes. Um, we just, we've built, we brought a lot of population into our city and we haven't adjusted for this fact that we have no park space for them besides Housie Park, which is down the road, but it's not on a negative 20 day someplace where you're going to go walk your dog. Probably, my guess. Okay, thank you. That's helpful. Um, and now that you've mentioned that, that is a theme that has come up for me for the past year in my role at WSB. It's been mentioned. It's in the redevelopment master plan for the downtown. Um, Planning Commission has mentioned it many times as well. Right. Similar vision um, of having a place for the downtown community to, to gather and to be outside. So... If if a subcommittee is is the intention, I think the park commission, or sorry, the the planning commission would be um, a great place to start, and okay. because the EDA has, uh, you know, they've got a little bit of involvement as well with that other piece of property in terms of coming up with maybe a, okay. an idea for some open space, they might want some involvement. Uh, one thing that the comprehensive plan, I believe, recommends more broadly is a citywide park plan that is probably something that might need to be considered as well, as opposed to these smaller piecemeal plans. Um, and whether that comes, you know, concurrently or before more specific park plans needs to be discussed. Yeah. Um, Have you seen this? That's the implementation plan. So I think, and this has come up like most recently at the planning commission last month when they were reviewing the capital improvement plan. Um, so a, a comprehensive plan is going to, in terms of park park planning, is going to make sure that um, all of the all of the facilities are kind of being looked at in a holistic way to make sure that there's a prioritization citywide in terms of are we meeting all of the goals? Is there enough parkland for all the community residents within a certain radius? Um, how are we going to uh, prioritize improvements based on those those factors? Um, I'm not entirely sure. I have not had a chance to read through the park implementation plan, but it seems like it's more park specific and doesn't look at it more holistically. So I think that um, something that's going to be citywide might be um, beneficial. And then we can, you know, use that as a way to start looking at grant opportunities um, for things like, you know, trail improvements, something that the county and the, and the state might be able to provide for. Um, I'm just getting started, so I don't have a lot of background mm -hmm. on, <laughs> on on the parks part of the uh, part of the job yet. And so, did would that would something like that happen mostly in the planning commission? A park plan, the like, holistic park. That would probably be spearheaded by this group, and they would have they would have a role in, in reviewing it and to make sure it's um, in compliance with the the overall comprehensive plan. Got it. Generally, you would hire a consultant for something like that. Um, Sounds like a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You. <laughs> I'm watching. It's a different, language, like, oh. different product, though. I feel like didn't WSB, maybe it was just for housing, Jill, didn't they put a plan around that park? Is that? WSB I wrote the majority of the Park and Bruma plan. But I there was. I remember her name. Candace Amberg. Thank you. But there was also, a, do you know what I'm talking about? There was like a really specific, like, But we didn't go through the process of like doing the whole demographics and yeah. doing an inventory of like everything at the parks. We did sort of a prioritization, <laughs> um, probably age-wise and kind of maintenance, and and got an idea of where we needed to look. Um, doing the holistic might be a good thing on top of the park improvement plan to go back and look at it. I feel like we talked about that at a meet. I feel like Candace was at a meeting 
and we she didn't was, we was. didn't know who she was but she was yeah. sounding yeah. very informed and we're like we're yeah. sorry who are you and, she, and then yeah. <laughs> she was talking about population and how, yes. yes the yes. Demo, the demographics around each yes park yes and absolutely that, the USB has the tools to be able to provide that information. Right. Yes. So we have had this conversation before, and I think we did talk about wanting to do that. And now that we're actually at the place where we're like moving on stuff, bringing that back up and having that be a focus of what we do is a good idea. So we would, we would hire a consultant to help us with that work. Is there is that similar to the bidding process where you have to, like, put it out and? I'm not entirely sure what the purchasing policy is with the city yet. Um, maybe you would know, like, what depends on the depends on the dollar amount. Whether it's got to be thrown out for bids. I mean, yeah. okay, but you know, and and, and again, walk. You know, crawl before you walk. Walk before you run. Um, I, I would say look at the functional experts within the building and figure out next steps. Um, and to, to, to Brandy's point, probably to, to, to pair up, to buddy up with somebody on planning <coughs> to, be able to be able to help move move things forward. Um, the next mayor comes from the planning commission, so I'm assuming he's going to bring a lot of yep. a lot of knowledge as well as far as how that side of the business that side, that that side of the commission works. Because um, at the end of the day, everything all rolls up in that comprehensive plan. So. It's not a slowdown, Sarah. No, it's no, a, no, it's, no. It's, I a, was it's just, a gathering along the I'm way. I'm trying to keep it moving. So yep. first meeting in January, I can attend. Is that Will that work? Can I put it on their agenda? Can someone put it on their agenda? Yeah, I could sure do that. Okay, thank um, you. So the, the agenda item would be dis discussion with uh, Park... Recreation. I think part of it would be to gather any interest from their commission to see if one or two people would want to join me and whoever else is on my mystery committee to um, kind of start becoming the subcommission of citywide downtown park. Okay, so establishing a subcommittee for the yeah, I think I think if, if, if we need to go to the environmental committee too, then we could try to step in there and just see if there's one person, you know, someone who would want to join us in like a when we meet separately from this to just pave forward so that there's some momentum here. I think. Yeah, I don't think there's an environment. I mean, I felt this way for four years, but now that these buildings are actually up, I think the pressure is even more on us. And if we're starting to sell more and more land, we have to put a halt. We have to stop at some point before it's all gone, and we can't can't go backwards. Jill, can you put it on the uh, reports for commissions every month now, so it doesn't get lost in the shuffle, the mass, the uh, downtown plan. We probably won't have a report every month, is we won't my have guess. A report, but, but at least we'll keep it in the keep it in the loop. I'm not, I imagine in January you're going to have one, but December. Somebody remind yeah. me next month that I'm supposed to go to that the next month. Put okay. it on your calendar right now. Yeah. Yes. Um, who, can we identify who's on that subcommittee with you? Because <laughs> I feel like Artie was the one that messaged me. Artie, okay. I'm just afraid it was me, <laughs> too, because I'm like just volunteering. What time for is the, is the planning commission at 6 30? It is. Yep. In this, in this building? Okay. All right. And if you're interested in talking to the um, the EDA, they meet on the second Tuesday at three three o'clock. Three o'clock. Is that one that you think would be better to pull in like at this time or later on? I'm thinking the planning commission. Yeah, my my guidance is hang tight in planning commission. Planning commission's your number one. Okay. Um, they've it, the conversations have already taken place. Sure. I've I've already had conversations with Councilmember Wong about. The direction of what the downtown of of a downtown park because it's a priority yep. priority on both sides. Okay, so nice to hear. That's <laughs> um, there is one spot that I and somebody will steal credit <laughs> that I've been looking at. Um, it's not a park. Uh, it's not a park now, but it's on the corner of Charles and Seventh um, to the so the next step. Region. The old Masonic Lodge. The old Lodge. Yep. Yeah. That, I don't, that's oh. been on my radar as well. Yeah. But that would, private it would meeting. honestly be yeah. like the perfect spot. Um, do you know where the next step is? Or Love oh, Ice Cream? The hill oh, yeah. It's right over by 
It's yeah. Across the street from the. Duke I was going to say, who owns it? Tracy. Tracy. Okay, but that might be something that. That's great. I mean, it's really close to housing. It's the only thing. It's like was blocks what, away. What we talked about last time. But, but it's a great spot. But you would walk fr you would walk to that place mm -hmm. from those apartments. You wouldn't walk to housing. Yeah, true. Right, right. And if and it's almost like I think we're calling it a parklet or whatever. This could be a little bit more than a parklet. It's highly visible. Um, and if you wanted more of, if you wanted like a bigger park, then you have Housie just two, right. two it blocks away. Everything. Yeah, it has everything that you're I looking for. I think that's for. just what we had to go through with the options. Cause the other one was that where that fake gas station was and there were some environmental yes, concerns. Gas Cause then I think oh, yeah. too, I think about the townhomes that are up that might have a lot more families in them than the apartments. Cause you think about they're kind of in a desert over there too with no, they're even more in a desert. They have no parks over there. There's a playground behind the apartments. On McKnight. A new apartment built, yeah. What looks that, to be a two year old playground. Tim, isn't there I'm a not, way I know, across not from the townhomes that the city that, that's, owns? So I, I, would, I was going to go there. There is city owned lots across the street from, um, what do we call that? The, the, the townhomes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The name of the development slips me. The it's one on uh, that south. Also, that entire intersection mm -hmm. is city owned land. <laughs> Um, there's been conversation that it might be nice to put a couple pieces of playground equipment up there. What yeah. spot are um, you talking about, Tim? Second, uh, third and seventh. Third and seventh. The top of the right hill. Across from the top, top of the hill. Homes. It's a wooded area. Charles and Charles and up here. Charles and 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 Charles that one. Well, you're talking one. about the same lot they are. So. Um, there's a couple other spots that that I have thought about often. Is the one um, that little triangle down by the VFW? Oh. Yeah, it is a parklet, isn't it already? They, no. That's in our brochure. Is it? Yeah, it's in our. It's called a parklet. The triangle it's by a the triangle. VFW. Yeah, a long time ago, somebody wanted to put something on there, and I just threw myself on the ground and kicked and screamed because, you know, you can't build something and not have anybody in charge of it. But uh, that would be, in my mind, a really nice It's place. a small, if I remember right, it's a small, it's a, it's, a, it's grass right now. It's, it's grass and trees. Yeah, and yeah. It, it's small. Oh, it was being built. Um, the other but, thing is how much ground do we have around right the community center? Yeah. That's not much, so I don't not much? think. Not much? No. Because... Is it the okay. Franklin Apartments? Is that? Yeah. They own it. They own a chunk of the parking lot. So I don't. The that's a hotel? great question. The to but there's ground there between the. And, I and so I think this. The, I think this there. should go to whatever this planning. Like they're gonna know, and then like let's not spend time on it yeah. tonight because we're not gonna solve it. But. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you, Sarah. I was gonna be the the bad yeah. voice myself. No, no. I'm just. Oh, it's, I'm I mean, the whole the whole point the whole reason we're here is to have this discussion though. Yeah. Like we're brainstorming, we're talking about planning and we're brainstorming other yeah. ideas. So I don't think that this conversation is bad or wasted. I don't think it's way. wasted, but like well, trying to decide here. on a thing when we don't know right. what what is being purchased or like has, you know. I, I agree that we're not, I don't think we're deciding on no things. We're just having like, this is literally the culmination of the work that we've done for the last two years to like actually now yeah. move forward and talk about the park plan. So. I'm I'm fine if we also bring it to the planning commission, but we can also like we also live here and have opinions about trying to look at where it would be. Mm -hmm. um, so the next action step is attending a meeting and forming a subcommittee across different commissions. Yep. And yep. And that's downtown park. So that's the very next thing, or or is there any reaching out that happens even before that meeting? With the planning commission? Sounds like we're moving towards the planning commission. Yeah, but that's not till January. I think part of it is that, like, if we're looking at our park, like our park Im implementation plan, the plan we had in place for like the next year is to spend the money on the master plan. So, like, it wasn't going to be building next year, but like right. using that money on the master plan, which I think that's what we all want to be in agreement on, which it sounds, I don't want to make a presumption, but it sounds like most people are okay to like. Have the due diligence of a subcommission plus um, a WSB or whoever to to do the work here to find the spaces, 
because that's what I would like to see is like, here's the come, they're coming back, here's the 10 spaces you have, and we discuss, okay, here of, of, of our available options, do we buy something from Tracy Luther? Do we, yeah. whatever, That's that would be helpful because then we can say, okay, this is pros and cons of those locations. Um, but I think that part of me is like, yes, to the spending the master plan and figuring out that subcommittee. So you're satisfied with, uh, we're gonna move, the next step is the subcommittee and go to the planning commission. Yes, with the potential of spending yeah. the money on the master plan when we've got the timing right, we know which yep. commissions are involved. And then you can continue to come forward each month and just, Jill? Would it be something you guys want me to reach out to WSB and have them take a look at the downtown and find the spaces they're really familiar with? I mean, they I think that would be a wonderful place yep. to start because I think the more information we have, if we, let's say it's Tracy's Luther's lot and we want it, like, private owner. And yeah, that we need to know the path to go down for which space we have, what... Right, right. Then you can take that to the Planning Commission so yeah. we've had them look at this. These are... I think that would be a wonderful out. use of yes. some of our money. Okay, mm -hmm. let's okay. do that. Totally. Okay. You good with downtown right now, Sarah? Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to McKnight. Mm -hmm. so we essentially have to do the same thing that we're doing with yeah. downtown yeah. park yep. with McKnight. Yep. We have to talk about... We have to hire USB or WSB, but... Has WSB done work around that for us yet? What are we going to do with McKnight? That's what we have to Question. figure. We have to talk to the Planning Commission, I'm sure, about what they want to do as well. That's the one park. One point four million dollar question. Would be, would yeah. be my guidance. I'm come up, come up what with. What do we want to do with, with it? Do we want to? Yeah, I don't think the Planning Commission um, has anything to say with what you do at McKnight. It's your park. We just need. We can. So we don't have to get a master plan for that. I think this was one of the big ones, so we had talked about the splash pads. So the question yeah. would be, if we're going to do a big investment like that, like what is, I mean, we can all say, yay, let's do that. But like that comes with a lot of caveats for maintenance. And that's where I think we were wondering about the master plan is if we make that more of a destination park or something, so we have a lot of space. Well, do we need to understand? Dog parks have been talked about too, so mm -hmm. we got to come up with things, yep. Yeah, I, I got to come up I, with what I we did want. Note on here, Lloyd, that there is, dog park isn't in the anything from year one through ten. I know that's that is a priority. That is a yeah. Yeah. it is a priority. It's a priority for council that we need something. Yeah, a lot of people. And council gotten and it lot. doesn't necessarily have to be. A, speaking for myself, there's land. It doesn't have to be a permanent location. It can just be land that is don't it, that is designated for now. Well, I think that's so, McKnight just has a lot of conversation that has to happen. Like, what do we want there? Mm -hmm. It could be a lot of things. Um, we, al we also threw up pickleball there, um, mm -hmm. didn't we? Did we talk about, <coughs> oh no, it was, um, what's that, uh, that soccer? Oh, it's uh, futsal. 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 We that's talked about we that. Talked about. I mean, so that's a. Yeah. That's just it, though. I mean, it's a, there's so many things we could do with that space, but we don't want to just throw a bunch of random stuff in there and not make it make sense. Right. Um, so we want to look at futsal. I like get somebody to give us an idea of well, like nice to work for, for, for futsal. Futsal is really cheap to put in. It's like... And there's grants. We and there's grants. And mm -hmm. uh, unless we made it like a like a futsal center, you know, like we put in multiple spaces so that people could have like tournaments and stuff there it feels like futsal would be better at some of our like medium-sized parks that you know like throwing one in at housey isn't gonna it's like 300 bucks or something like that and doesn't take up that much room the mcknight feel at least from my opinion mcknight feels like a bigger yeah. thing like a bigger opportunity whereas futsal is like <coughs> oh we, like we can put that there and then people can uh can use it. Where would we put it at? How is he? Could could it work at Northwood? Yeah, it could totally yeah, work. Like at we Northwood. have a lot of sort of in the hockey space. area. Well, I don't know. Northwood. Here, I'll like I'll, I'll show you what a futsal arena yeah, space looks like. I'm not, I wasn't clear on what his intention was, but I think he was a soccer coach at the He's high school. The yeah. High school. So yeah. McKnight, I he think, made to. sense to him because the kids would go from school yeah. over there like they do for the softball, baseball. Mm -hmm. It's close proximity. I think to it's the school. The question of what you do with McKnight is: Do you make it a part? 
I think there has to be a vision, right? So like, S-A-L. do you build off of the baseball fields and make it a sports complex? And maybe it's pickleball and futsal and we have these unique yeah. things. Or do we want to take it a different twist and say, we're going to make this a really family friendly park and we're going to have a splash pad and a dog park. Or I think it, I, th I think the thing about McKnight is it probably also needs a subcommittee um, because it's a really big, it's 125 plan. Feet. Would you be interested in WSB doing the graphic, the demographics for that area also and giving us some yeah. ideas of what should go there? Because um, for 2023, <laughs> we actually have that money set aside to do the planning for um, McKnight. I think, yeah, the more information we can know, the better. Um, I know we've done a lot of surveys and part of them had come up with the things like splash pad or whatever. Um, so I, I know we have some information behind that, but I think I don't. it could be cool to turn it into like a sports complex. Like, it, I mean, I mean like that's already right there. there. Think about if we made some cool pickleball courts, futsal. I don't know, gaga ball. I don't know, just a yeah. bunch of like family friendly sports. I, mm -hmm. I, I love the idea of the splash pad, but part of me is like, if we get this perfect downtown park, can we have a splash feature in it or something um, like a smaller one that kids could still play in? I, I don't know. We need I have to a concern. find out what the maintenance on something like yeah. that is because I heard it's very intensive and inexpensive. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And water is also and, a and water yep. consideration. And it's limited. Yeah. Really. Yeah. So I don't know if that's really a good idea yeah um Ingrid I was just gonna say uh, from an environmental standpoint too um, when I hear splash pad I have concerns about water use and I you know I know nothing about them but um, but I also looking toward the future it doesn't seem like water is gonna be become, become more abundant right. as we move forward <laughs> um, so uh, that was that's my only concern about a splash pad but but maybe a smaller one is manageable. It, it's not something I'm going to die in the hill over, but it is something that's come back numerous, numerous times in all the surveys. So speaking mm -hmm. for our citizens with young kids, there isn't one anywhere near here. Yeah. So I'm trying to think as a city that's small, that's still trying to put itself on the maps, how do we bring people in? How do we get the citizens that are here to, to really love this community? And a lot of that is from the parks and the parks yeah. we build going forward. Um, but I'm also a designer, so I want to think about the total plan when we build something. So as I think about McKnight, and it looks like there's a lot of investment in McKnight baseball fields that tells me that is it going to be weird that we put in some fun park? Now, I think what I have seen at other communities with baseball fields is that there is a playground in the center. So when if mom and dad are in a softball league or if the brother's playing, like there's something for the other kid to do. Um, so that could be fun as we think about a full sports complex is can we make it like mm -hmm. mom and dad are going to play pickleball, but the kids can play on the playground or something that's more interactive. And there is batting cages there, too. So it's like kind of already a whole I don't know. I mean, as we s start to see the popularity of some of this stuff shift, we have tennis courts that could be refinished. They're probably easier than starting from scratch. But oh, I'm totally open, mm -hmm. but. No, no, no. We know what this oh, costs. We already went through this. Are, we started from scratch. Yeah. They're scratch. Yeah. They're shot. Yeah. You know, I'm not against a splash pad per se, but um, we have Silver Lake. Mm -hmm. And I think most of the communities that have splash pads don't have a nice lake. Yeah. Right. I mean, we already have a water feature that we should be taking care mm -hmm. of, and I think we are. Um, and I love space splash pads, but they're only for a small part of the population also. Yeah. I mean, once the kid's five or six, they're not going on a splash pad anymore. So uh, as much as I think it's nice, uh, is it? do we have that luxury? I agree. It also seems like other cities are investing in the, like, sports complex mm -hmm. to style parks. Like, we were just talking about that yeah. pickleball like complex that they're they're building two of them mm -hmm. so and they can be you you know we could rent them out to teams like we could turn a profit on mm -hmm. the utilization of of this as well and a lot of different people can use it well i've i've loved the idea of that futsal ever since i brought it up i'm just knowing that it's a limited option the other thing i don't want to do is that something's hot right now and then it goes away in 10 years and we've invested a lot of money you know if pickleball fat like fades in and out 
But I do think if we make something more of a destination, um, I think that there could be something there. Some of those things you're talking about, though, they don't, like you were saying, they don't. That's not a big investment in mm -hmm. some of those. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it wouldn't hurt to put. I can't even say go go ball or whatever that ga, is in the ga, 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 ga ball, because <laughs> I know that's just a. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yeah. that would be fun in some of our parks too. Yep. Yeah, and those things that's not a big investment. Mm -hmm. So in 15, 20 years, if it's not used, you can take it out and not cry over the yeah. money that was right. spent. And if it was futsal, it, some of that's going to be grant money anyway. So. Sure. Yeah, and I was miss I was miss uh, misremembering the futsal is not like three hundred dollars to put in. That's like <laughs> a that's like a tennis court level mm -hmm. um, investment. It was the Gaga ball that I was mm. confusing that with. Because one of the things brought up to us is Target is a big grant writer for the futsal, and it's right across from one of their stores, and we might have good chances based on proximity being far away, a Target store, and that if we get in on the ball early here, we could. Um, I think it'd be great. And maybe it could bring in other community organizations that would have futsal leagues or things for, for people or adults of all ages to do. Um, I do think as part of that sports, if, if that McKnight was to turn into a sports complex, I think it would be great to add a small playground in the center of that for yep. people. Um, as we think holistically, and I'm speaking for myself because it is torturous to bring one child to a sport, sporting game and your other kids sitting there saying, what, what, what you know, um, and Roseville has that within their like Central mm -hmm. Park feature, and it's the nicest thing in the world. They've got netting over it, so it kind of looks like a secret fort inside the baseball field, so that so no one gets pelted by a ball. Um, mm -hmm. But it's genius because I'm like, oh, this is so nice. Yeah. Baseballs. No, it's it looks kind of like a castle. They just have netting over the top, like a big post in the middle, and netting that connects to the fence lines of all the stuff around it, and so. So the ball, ball. Yeah, will go they don't hit them. They don't hit the kids. Yeah. So could we ask WSB to take a look at McKnight and if we wanted to put like a couple. Maybe even basketball courts. We're shy of yeah. those in the city. That's yep. still a growing popularity of sport. Yep. Um, like if we were to put uh, three, like how many courts can we put there feasibly if we were looking to add. Yeah. Tell them to build us the coolest like the sports complex yeah. <laughs> of that the demographics, man, because I'm, I'm thinking yes. about. Tower Park, we've gotten complaints that like the netting comes off and that's like one of our only basketball courts and there's a high density population down there and high school use as well. Like, yep. um, I think we should just think about all kinds of sports courts. That could also be dual purpose. If it's basketball, it could also be something, you know, I don't know. Right. Um, yeah, just not hockey. <laughs> Does Other Kunkel Field fall under the park and rec or is that fall, is that city, is that school? Kunk. Kunk. The baseball it's field. Ever been field. under the park? In oh yeah. Okay. It's because it's all right there. As right. you as you talk about yeah. a complex. The Legion Field. It all yeah. sits. It all sits right there. Yeah. I mean that butts up to the old tennis courts. It was all built by the school district. Yeah, but we don't. But they I mean, don't. The new field was done by the school district when they built the school. But they don't manage it anymore. No, they don't. Does the city maintain it? Yeah, the city, the city maintains, maintains it. it. I just didn't know. Yeah, the school district's completely out. Yeah. Okay. And I'm assuming. The ownership is, they don't, it's owned by the city? So that, the Legion field is owned by the city? Yeah. From what I, um, we just had like a meeting today from what they said, that's the premium field. So the high school plays on that. Um, the VFW, Legion, the, the, the bigger league. If. Question though, and I don't know the answer to this, like if McKnight's getting a renovation or something as part of this, could one of those four fields be uh, more elevate, like one of them be more elevated and we could use that space for something else? I'm just, we're talking about baseball is downtrending and we have five fields there. They're softball fields. Yeah. Oh, soft, sorry, sorry. That's I don't different. See taking any of those away. Okay. Uh -uh. Um, I don't know. They are. F for rent fields, I don't know what what we get, but I yeah. do know there are leagues that are there. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean it's, maybe it's I fine. Mean, to to your point, can you can you look at one of the fields facing the school and expand it and make it the high school and legion baseball field tied into that complex? Yeah. But I don't know. 
if the of if all four fields are used and rented at capacity. I think that's something. And the that's kind of sacred land out. in the city too. I mean, yep. as far as <laughs> Larry, I'm looking at you. I don't know if you screw with the baseball field. Well, the McKnight complex where the four softball fields are aren't big enough to put a baseball field in. There. But you would. Oh. If you expand off to the one that the, the outfield goes towards the high school, Maybe. Mm -hmm. but, you know, yeah, you couldn't do it without spending money to make it I work. Mean, Four hundred feet, they only got two hundred fifty yeah. now. I mean, at some of them where they didn't expand to three hundred like they normally should. Yeah. Maybe we could ask WSB to look at that as they're looking at their plans to see if it's even possible. And maybe the answer is no, and that's just off. But I, maybe they could look at that. I'm not saying that has to be done. I, I'm just bringing it up as an option since they've brought up. Well, should we just have uh, WSB take a look at mm -hmm. complex? Yeah. If WSB could just figure out uh, Everything we what we do. should do with our parks, that would be yeah. And then come helpful. and present. <laughs> yep. Present. We'll give you money. All right. So we have an agreement that Jill, can you put it on the agenda? Just running agenda? If WSB's got something for our next meeting. Okay. Do we want to start a subcommittee? <laughs> Sounds like all not. those not on a subcommittee speak now. <laughs> uh, that's our park, you know. You and me. I can get a little. Just put Laura on every committee. I mean, <laughs> put Laura. I would be interested. I, I um. I would be interested you send, in that. Can you email me that guy? Uh, Kit. The futsal guy. Yeah. Mr. Futsal. Can I be a no. lesser involved commission member on the McKnight Fields Committee? Can we wait to hear back from WSB before we decide if we need a subcommittee or not? Because it might be something that's really straightforward. Yeah. They yeah. design a dream complex for us, and we're like, sweet, let's okay. do it. Yeah. All right. Oh, good. <laughs> we good with that? I'm just trying to look at time. Okay. Casey, east side of the park, master plan. So my question here is, do we need a master plan, or can we just decide what we want to do with it? Because yeah. I then decide what you're going to. I think this is one we added back. This was like a wait, but then now that Army Park's yeah, been torn out, the east side. we felt strongly about this yeah. over Polar. Yeah. So, so is the list I'm looking at been reprioritized then since before? Because I didn't think Casey was on there. If what happened was. Army Park no, no, I'm, went I'm away. I'm aware of that, but yeah. there, was, there was conversation when Army Park went away that it move up on the priority yeah. on the priority list. So is this the new spot for Casey, or is this I, been always the spot that Casey was when you guys finished the plan last? I would ask whatever. Jill because the master plan okay. thing's throwing me off. <laughs> um, definitely, Casey like moved up in priority based on we thought we had five more years of Army Park. So. That was that rug was pulled, and so we have to react, pivot, react. But okay. I don't we I don't know that we talked about a master plan ever. But based on the plan we approved, <laughs> uh, east side of the park's on there. I don't know when whether it was changed, but that's based. But on I know there was there was conversation that, and I guess my general overall question is when you get. Once you get through these, do you then want to reprioritize? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to be working on a lot of things, but does you know, does the downtown park, because of the additional layers that just got added tonight, mm -hmm. it still stays as a top priority, but you know that one's going to move slower than yeah, yeah. something yeah. else. And that so. was, I think, a three to five year one anyways. It was just the money for the planning that was designated for next year. I don't know if that's what the Casey Lake thing is, but I, I definitely think we should just move on Casey Lake next year. We should yeah. start the ideas of like, mm -hmm. what should we do with that? And I think that starts with talking to the companies that build this kind of stuff and see what our options are. Yep. Um, I know in the past, like Deb would go out to like game time or whatever and say, hey, we kind of want an interactive, we'd say kind of what we're looking for and they'd come back with catalogs or something and general price ideas of things that we kind of looked at them and said, this could be cool. You know. What are you thinking about putting over there? Oh, uh, I think something exercise. similar. We talked about like an adult exercise, oh, exercise sort yeah. of equipment. Because okay. we took out the old 
who are thinking yep. of so we we talked about exercise equipment. Um, I was actually talking to someone at the YMCA uh, about that, and something I'll tell you that they've expressed because they have it around that Maplewood, right by the Maplewood Community Center. Why is that it never gets utilized the outdoor exercise equipment? So they said the things that get used are like the pull up bars or monkey bars. Um, what I've seen at another park that I think is really I'd have to dig back in my photos. But it's like if you take what Army Park was, which is like kind of kids were using it as kind of like a Ninja Warrior course. Yeah. Um, and my kids are in Ninja Warriors now and they just love it. And it's all about climbing and just hanging. But adults can do it, too. They have some really cool outdoor equipment that is kind of modern Army Park, right? Like things you can climb on and then like monkey bars and like yeah. obstacle course thing yeah. Yeah. that is not a playground, but is like people could still do chin ups or pull ups, um, balance beams, like things like that that are kind of make your own adventure park. I, to me, that is like, yeah. people loved that park for what it was and it was simple, yeah. you know, but I think I've seen at other parks, some cool stuff, uh, the new one in Shoreview, if you guys haven't been there, that beautiful park right by the community center, it has a section of it and it's got like metal rubber, like walls that kids can jump between, but adults do that too. And it's like permanent and it's pretty sturdy and it could be whatever you want. You could sit on it and have a picnic if you want, you know, but, um, I've seen some of that, and it gets utilized. I, That's the first thing my kids run towards. I, I strongly agree with it, whatever you're saying. And I have to say <laughs> Love that, that Ingrid. I go to the Oakdale Nature Center all the time, and those one-off, um, they're well-intentioned, but I very rarely see anyone us using those. You know, here's a pull-up bar, you know, 50 more yards yeah. down the trail. There's another thing. Mm -hmm. Those discrete exercise things it doesn't seem like it's attracting very many people. But if you put them all in one place, like Army Park was, uh, you can bring a daycare yeah. there, and kids can climb yeah. on things. Um, you know, I, I agree. Keep it kind of open-ended. Yeah. It's not so specific. It's not like a zip line, or a, uh, and maybe one of those could be part of it. But um, I, I would love to see a, a, like an updated Army Park right there. Yeah. Uh, that kids would pretend is their ninja warrior training ground. You know, I would love that. Could still use it. But adult, yeah. definitely and adults, adults would use it yeah. too. Yeah, there must be some good examples of that. Like WSB. Where's this? <laughs> what? No. So like yeah, here's, maybe even here's some examples shopping. of like, this is one I think in, um, but it's like, it's little walls. It's like climbing stuff. This one's maybe not the best, but. Um, that would probably be more talking to the create the playground yeah. creators, yeah. right? Yeah, that's what yeah. I mean. Like, it's like a little rock climbing wall and like a whatever. Like, adults can use that yeah. too. Or we, we have to make it what we want it to be and maybe it's more natural looking and it's green and not red, yellow, and blue or, you know, but... Um, Is there a yeah. big enough footprint um, over there to put much? You space yeah. it out. There's a yeah. big footprint over there. Okay. Um, it sounds like maybe landscape structures. Uh, I love that place. Um, They're expensive, down, though. There, yeah, but they built the park. We, that was our community build over on um, the east side of Silver Lake Park, mm -hmm. and that playground is awesome. And it has lasted so long; like, it still looks good and is holding up. Um, so yeah, they are expensive. But I, I mean, think, I'd love I think to we see just what get three time. different companies and we yeah, go out to them exactly. and we say, "You guys give us this is kind of what we want. You guys give us what you think, and then um, see what it costs." Mm -hmm. Or we usually give them a budget. And say don't go over this my guidance would be work with public works there's gen i believe there's two companies that the city works with game time Park. landscape and the reason why is the maintenance aspect of it once it's yeah. installed mm -hmm. and if we utilize common companies the parts generally are interchangeable so mm -hmm. yeah um that would be as as you go down that venture i'm not trying to discourage yeah but just, it, I think from a public work standpoint, it would it would maybe be easier. Mm -hmm. um, but you should have a subcommittee. <laughs> oh. No that. subcommittees. I think you're on this, Tim. You're on that one, too. Uh, yeah, there's, no, there's no guarantee I'm going to be on the Parks and Rec after the first of the year, guys. Uh, I, I do want to uh, mention, too, though, we incorporate the ADA. So there's a little more to it than just putting equipment back in. We do have to do like a large plan on that. And so that also ties into my other comment that I would, you know, take into consideration is the location. 
can you repurpose the space that the Army land was, the Army park was on, and talk and potentially move this structure up to the to Upper Casey's parking lot? Move it. There's a whole big flat area up there before you get into the water. Um, there's a swing up, a swing set up there now, and that little spinny roundy, merry-go-roundy thing mm -hmm. that's up there. Um, but there's a lot, and that's flat land. Um, and from an ADA standpoint, then it's easily accessible from the parking lot. We're not having to make sure that the the, the trail to get to it is right. of proper elevation change. Mm -hmm. um, just again, something to think about. Just throwing out throwing out ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. This looks like game time. And Sarah, you and I walked that space when we were looking yeah. at doing yeah. some other no, that's stuff a great space. pre pre or early on COVID. Yeah, so that's a big square footage over there as well. Mm -hmm. And the ball field is up there, so if kids want to go play while well, their oh, sibling cool. is, so it's yeah, like yeah, adults can field. get on yep. this, climb on it, I um, love closer it. to the old army. But it's park, like is things that were used. That's it. Used to be a t-ball field. I would have to yeah. look to Jill or to. area <laughs> there. On that, that ball field, that's a huge area too. Yeah, and the it, really? and that area also used to be used for polar football. I don't mm -hmm. junior polars. I don't know if I'd like to. Yeah. I don't know if they still utilize that space. I have, but there's a ton of space back there. there yeah. Courses. I don't think that course is dwindling, and they're looking to combine with other cities. Mm-hmm. No more games down there anymore. Aren't there? Originally, when they got rid of the t-ball field and mm -hmm. they built the other two baseball fields, they set a football field kind of in between. Yep. It hasn't been used now for three years. Okay. So that as far as football games anyway. I mean, so there's a ton of... It was a low area, and they had to build it up because every time it rained, it was full of water. Mm -hmm. So they spent a lot of time and money doing that. Gave us two baseball fields that they needed at that time, but they really don't anymore. Right. Up, up in the <laughs> subcommittee. Do we? <laughs> no, we need. We, we thought need we were one. just gonna have the playground. Yeah, we have. We have one. Oh, yeah, the playground. One WSB person. <laughs> just have playground. Three <laughs> plans. She'll do the whole city. Um, okay. Think, oh. Thinking out loud, we'll. We're looking for the downtown location. I'm going to so send you a really bunch of pictures, Jill, of like yeah. things that I'm talking about. I think what would be helpful is I know we work with Game Time and Landscape, um, and maybe we just reach out to them and say, what could you design for us within X amount of dollars? and um, Or show us what you could do and then give us a price range of options. So for Casey, it's more of like trying what you guys will kind of look through and see. Um, types of equipment you want to put in there before we start a plan. Does that sound right? Well, yeah, location first, because we're talking kind of two possible spots. You have to nail that down first. I, I don't disagree with Tim. I think you could make like kind of a second park over in the back corner where that other stuff is and utilize what's mulch and stuff that's already down there. But um, I like the army location too, but I don't disagree that um, for maintenance, does it create more work for them to go like three different spots? Yeah, and it's more accessible, ADA accessible probably. Getting getting to the park would be easier. Are you, and you're looking at the space that's closer to like the, the other parking area? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. My only question would be in the past, like what we would do is if we we're like, okay, we're gonna build a new playground at uh, Polar, then we went out to bids and said, okay, this is the budget we have, this is what we're looking for, and we look at a couple companies and look at options, and as a group, we'd pick. Do we feel like this project is too big to do that, or can we treat this like a playground? Treat it like a, play treat it like a playground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it would be under that. <laughs> Sorry, my mic was there's a lot of There's a lot of trees. No, Over so here, by that football there. field? Well, where Army Park is, there's a lot of trees. Where that open space is, yeah, in the back, yeah, there's nothing. But it's not accessible. Like, again, it's not easy to get to. But we could make it accessible. Well, no, it's accessible by the trail. I'm just saying that, like, if you're – you've got a long trek to get there. Oh, got it. Yeah. Okay. 
Dog right. park. We good on Casey That'd be a for good now. Spot for a dog park. Good on Casey. Yep, because it is Northwood. That's like ideal. Yeah. Lloyd, do you think we have enough to well to work on yeah. right now? I, I, if you feel like these are the top priorities, should we get? I have one other thing to mention that's not on here that I thought was um, is the environmental learning center. We had talked about some small like naturescape play or something there that we thought was on the shorter. I thought was on the shorter term list. Well, maybe that's yeah. next Nancy, year. But do you want to talk anything about Northwood or are you? Well, we haven't come to that yet, but. <laughs> well, we're next. That's a well, definite. Jill's, Jill's saying I'm she's suggesting that we stop. Oh, we <laughs> stop. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's enough for everything. Yeah. So again, okay. my, my recommendation is look at the list, now reprioritize things okay. so that staff's got direction as to where the priorities from the commission is coming from. So if Casey became more important than McKnight or if I, I'm just, I'm, I'm spitballing guys, but you know, help help prioritize things so that everybody can march in, in one direction as opposed to okay. running fifteen. Yeah. We're good. We're good for the for tonight. Well, you do you want us to? You haven't prioritized anything. What's us to prioritize before that we leave? Downtown Park and McKnight uh, master plans are priorities, correct? <laughs> and then, well, I think the downtown is a longer game than yeah. we thought. Yeah a sense it's we're planning for it but we need to do some like partnering first so maybe that gets bumped down just because that's like happening in the background as we're working on other things i would yeah. is that how other people yeah. i think we have to have like actionable items that we can say we're doing this in 2023 and other ones that like this is in progress yeah what about casey lake park that seems like that's uh an attainable i think we could to yeah. me, my thought would be number one, like actionable item next year is we could put something in Casey. Like I think mm -hmm. that could happen. Mm -hmm. yep. Number two is I think we need to be working on McKnight and the downtown park in the background because I think neither of those are going to happen next year probably, my guess. Yep. McKnight would still be a pretty big thing to get done in a year. Um, I do have to say it feels kind of gross that we're prioritizing Casey Lake when Casey Lake has gotten so much recently or so much of our like new builds and dedication and all of that like I I agree that this stuff is important um and maybe it's relatively easy to pull off but as somebody who doesn't live on that side of town to know that like we're now focusing on Casey Lake Park again feels kind of gross I'd like to see something it, going with Northwood yeah yeah, Northwood, is, is bad. Northwood needs our, our love yeah. and attention. Yep. Um, That's why I had mentioned. Uh, the, I think the Casey stuff came forward because we lost Army Park, and it yeah. suddenly felt like, wait, I hate, I hate it when stuff goes away and there's nothing new there. Yeah. Yeah. I think That's we also have to consider the attendance of the parks, too. Like, as you're talking mm -hmm. about priorities and, like, where you're going to spend a lot of money, I mean, we just agreed to spend almost... 250 grand at Housie Park, and that's probably one of the smallest attended parks of like when you look at the regional system of silver, which probably gets a lot of people with the beach use. I take that into consideration because we haven't talked about tower, but again, like it's a small park that doesn't get a huge lot of use. That could be because we don't invest in it, but it's also because your pull is going to be those bigger events that are happening at those well, other parks. He's also closer to the downtown area, and then you have all these people. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and we just spent we just spent two hundred and twenty six thousand so dollars. It's going to be used a lot more than maybe it has. I hope it does. Yeah, yeah, I think it will. And so, is so big. Is it not possible to have Northwood and Casey be on our list of things to make some progress on next year? Like we uh, could. I think that's what Tim's saying. Is I think we need to, mm -hmm. like, if we can get through them, great. I think, but we need to pick. Pick where you, I mean, to me, one actionable item doesn't seem like that much. We used to put in a couple things, you know, we used to do a few things a year when we were rolling, mm -hmm. rocking and rolling, yeah. but. But theoretically, both Casey and, like, they would serve different yeah. sides of town. They're all, they're mm -hmm. both large areas. Yep. Um, so maybe those, like you're saying, could be our top two priorities. Yeah. Because they're similar scale projects and they will benefit Mm -hmm. both areas 
And in the background, we've got the master plans. Yeah. We're, st we're still working on McKnight and downtown parks. And I, I do still feel like the Environmental Learning Center at some point, and maybe that's not next year, and we look at that for 2024, but I think that could be an asset that we just haven't touched yet either with the, like, nature play or something. Um, I'm not concerned that that has to be the priority next year, but I think just as far as the next three years. If, okay. If, if I can chime in real quick, Sarah. The, the environmental piece... Again, take a look at large projects and small scope. So if it's a matter of putting in two benches and keep it up towards the top because it's because it's quick and easy. If it's yeah. a major redevelopment with a lot of money, then throw it back in the priority. But there's a lot of things that are just tactical in nature. Yeah. Like if we said we want to put Gaga pits and housing Northwood, whatever, like that's a pretty small investment and pretty easy to do. Yep. But those parks are now deprioritized from... Yeah. But is there such a thing as saying, like, there's something we want to tackle that could go across parks? Like you said, benches or so. I'm Not that we need those. But let's say we were like, we need benches next year. Like, that would be a cross-park initiative. But it would be a low investment. Do you? I just No, 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 not benches. I'm just saying, like, like ga Gaga Ball, like honestly. Gaga Ball thing. We could, we could tackle two different parks by saying, let's talk about Gaga Ball, you know, places. Because I think if we, yeah. Wait a minute. I'm just going to shut up about that because yeah. it's not a huge priority. But Okay. okay. Interest of time. Yeah. I um, so downtown park and McKnight are our priorities right now, our top priorities. They're long-range priorities. They're long range. Casey and Northwood. They're not 2023 priorities no. as Casey far as. Casey and Northwood are tied for one <laughs> as on our priority as, list. <laughs> as far are as you what? okay with that? When? As far as when? As next, a, next year? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to table them till next year is no we're going to work on them yeah right. we're gonna, no, no we're nice. there we're going <laughs> those are the pro those are the parks we're going to focus on doing actionable things on by 2023 so next spring and summer we will be actively putting in and changing things at casey lake and northwood but we haven't specifically identified what those are yet i imagine that's what we'll do at the next meeting where we just talk about what are we going to do at Casey? What are we going to do at Northwood? What decisions can we make now so that when it's not winter, we can move on it? Okay. Is that correct? And keep it yeah. just at okay. those two. At those and can I just clarify for the Northwood? Because the piece in the budget is like $1.4 mm -hmm. Is the thought like whole Northwood like renovation? Or is it like componentry of like building like something? What? It was a whole north. I think it's a whole north. Okay. The shelter is 1980. The warming house is in. Okay. I'm like, yeah. hockey rink needs uh, to be redone. Right. Well, I think it's yeah. whole. Park. Like thinking strategically about, yeah, what can we make for Happen a destination, there. whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. It's a struggle. It's an ADA non. It's a non-compliant ADA park. So, do you move everything to what would what be the south end where the ball field is? So that you've got a level area to work with, and then you do fun, creative thing. I mean, so it's it, I, it's a bigger. What was the council's appetite? Like, what was everyone's appetite on the building? Like, everybody was like pro renovation, like build a new building, or for what? Well, because the one point four million dollars is what's scaring me for the twenty twenty three. So I just I'm trying to get my head wrapped around like what you won't get 1.3 million that's ex i know that's why you you're not if a project of that scope won't be completed yeah i don't think we were talking about that either i think we were just and you can't renovate that building no. i know no. it's already been told that it's bad i think it was not as big as a casey lake building no, no. but it's tear down or re like oh yeah a new building it's a tear down in a new building right. and repurpose it a little bit because when we went down there with uh mm -hmm. yeah yeah. With Marty? Was it Ron? Ron? Yeah. Yeah, Ron. yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's yeah. not good. But not on the scale of a Casey Park yeah. at all. Not e no. I mean, not not that anyone wants any more of my opinions, but I'd be hesitant to spend a lot of money on a building there when the housey one is nice. Yeah. When we don't have anything at Silver, which I think would be if you're going to spend money on a. And do we need another structure? I don't even know. But yeah, not, probably not at Silver. I think it's not. And I feasible think, at Silver. All right. I think that's what we're going to talk about at our next oh, yes. meeting. Sounds good. Is we'll talk about the big ideas and mm -hmm. then how we can break them into smaller actionable items that we can move on. For Casey right. and Northwood. Right yeah. Gonna, yep. For Casey and Northwood. Okay. Yes, those are our priorities for our next meeting. Which that brings me to: Are we having a meeting in December? Thought we decided we were. Okay. 
What are we looking at for the fourth Wednesday? That's going to be right at Christmas. Yeah, we can't do that. So the week before. Oh, the 28th? The fourth Wednesday is the 28th. Fourth Wednesday is the 28th. Oh, it's the Wednesday in between. Will anybody be there? <laughs> right before Christmas. We want to do the 21st? Too. I'd be more likely to be here the 21st than mm -hmm. the 28th. Yep. Agree? Yeah, I'll be out of town on the 21st, but that's okay. I haven't seen anything. All right. So the meeting will be the 21st. 21st? Correct? Yep. Okay. And we'll talk primarily about Casey Lake and Northwood. So, Ingrid, maybe you want to send your thoughts ahead of time? Sure. Yep. Since I won't be back. Yeah. Jill. I will. I will do that. Yep. All right. Okay. Any old business? I think this would come under old business. Oh. Our watch date yeah. for 2023. I got an email from Mike, and we have scheduled it for Tuesday, September 26th. It has to start at 7.30 rather than 7 because of the when it gets dark. Okay. So, yep, we're all set for that. Perfect. And Jill's going to get the building. Right, Jill? Jill. Going to get the building. Yep, okay. Any, okay. Other, <laughs> any other old business? Any reports from staff? So. I answered is Brandy, but we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Brandy. <laughs> And we do have a, oh, actually, do we have another new hire, too? So stop by sometime and meet him. He's uh, Chris Cherney. Started today. Hmm? Started today. Started today. Sweet. What, what is he? he which one? He is also a customer service administrator up there and, and will be taking on planning uh, commission and oh. probably ADA. Okay. But he'll be. Any, any other reports from commissioners or park liaisons <laughs> or? Yeah, I have a bunch, and I don't know if we want to. Well, they're, we're here now, so I guess it doesn't matter where they go. Um, we had um, we had we had a city council meeting last night, as well as it's my mic on, yeah, um, as well as a um, city workshop. And a couple of things did come up that were questioned, and the city has to. We have to vote on these. I believe it. it, it the fees have to be voted on for the it, it, when we pass the. Uh, um, past the budget. So a, a couple things popped up. There was questions around the fee for the ball fields in North St. Paul. Currently, we are not charging any nonprofit for use of the fields. And there was confusion as to when that popped up. Um, and what we're finding is that there are a lot of nonprofits that are non North St. Paul that are utilizing our ball fields, and North St. Paul is left with the cost to maintain, clean, et cetera. Um, and the question is do we charge a nominal fee regardless? Was it regardless of nonprofit, or was nonprofit paid a smaller fee and someone else paid a higher fee? Um, well, that's an option of doing profit, um, profit and nonprofit, um, resident, non-resident. It's kind of like the the rentals with the park. Um, non-residents will find a resident, so it doesn't matter. Um, and and the fee is pretty minimal. It's not even close to covering the maintenance. It's really more of a a fee to to use it, and it helps offset costs. So I think it's seventy-five dollars for four hours to rent the field, um, and some people, you know, the regular leagues pay, and then the nonprofits don't. And that just started, I think, a year or two ago. Before I think everybody paid. So that's what the discussion is kind of around: whether we continue nonprofits not paying all nonprofits or just North St. Paul nonprofit. When you're talking about nonprofits and for-profit softball teams, I don't understand. I don't know how that works. Are there are there or are there leagues that are for profit as opposed to nonprofit? Yes, or they were not able to produce um, the paperwork that they were nonprofit.
and there may be nonprofit outside of North St. Paul that is utilizing the fields for other activities. I mean, they could set they a nonprofit could be setting up their own tournaments. I'm okay with seventy five dollars. Is that what you recommend? I'm okay with seventy five dollars. The easiest for us in Park and Rec. <laughs> Seventy-five dollars to get to register to use the field. Each field. Um, it's yeah. It would be per field for the four-hour window. Do you know what the common in other situations in other cities what they charge? Um, it was hard to decipher. Um, a lot of the other city that we looked at was Oakdale, and they have several different fees. So it depended on all the different things that they were using at the field. So we just went with a kind of a flat rate. So this would be McKnight Field or a field at Casey? McKnight's mm -hmm. got their, no, I thought McK Did McKnight they? has their own pricing structure. Do they? It's like so $300. I didn't do anything with it last year. We were just doing $75 any field, four hours. everybody think? I've lost last night's packet. I don't have the pricing in front of me. So. I know. So I have no idea. We can share it. I mean, is there a lot of competition for getting the field? <laughs> if you charge 200 and nobody wants to use the field, it doesn't do us any good. Mm -hmm. But if yeah. you charge 75 and there's a lot of people that want to use it and we fill out our whole schedule, that's fine. But then we can up it next time. Sure. Yeah. I say we just trust the city and trust Jill and anybody have any objections to that? We can do that. I mean, if they don't have a strong opinion, whatever the council feels is. Yeah, there was, it was for the, there's a lot of new news that came to council last night. That's why I'm here tonight to, to talk about it. Um, do we want to, I, I mean, I think first and foremost, I want to make sure that North St. Paul gets first use of fields. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then that question, then the question of profit, nonprofit came up and do you allow North St. Paul nonprofits to use the field but charge anyone from outside of the city? Then you run into the same situation that you've got at the Pavilion at Casey is a lot of people utilizing North St. Paul Connections. So the, I think the general overall consensus is kind of what Jill brought forward, just a nominal flat fee. Um, because whether it's a North St. Paul resident or a non-North St. Paul resident, there's maintenance that needs to be done on those fields. And there was something on there. If, you, if you're having a tournament and you want your field maintained during the day, that's a $300 fee too. There were other. So um, the council, I think, was just looking for guidance from um, the park and rec for, or potentially clarity as to if you have a, an opinion one way or the other? My opinion is $75, whoever, whoever wants to rent it. Any objections to that? Start there, start low, and we can always look at it next year. Any objections? Does, we don't have legal here. Does there need to be a motion or anything done, or do we just bring it back? I think we can just, well, just bring it back. All right. Uh, next topic. <laughs> uh, looking for clarity at Housie Park. Uh, the pricing, there was confusion as to the pricing structure between the pavilion and the shelter. There, was, there were some who were of the belief that if you rented the pavilion, the shelter came with it. And that's always been in our policy. I think the other confusion was they thought you could rent the open air shelter separate from the building, and we haven't done that. And we don't know when it started. <laughs> so <laughs> on the on the fee structure, the open air structure for housing showed up as a for rent structure, and that's that's where the confusion came in. I thought we talked about that at the last meeting, making it so that people. Well, we talked about it for Silver Lake, right? Renting the pavilion, splitting splitting it in half. I'm, a day. 
Splitting the day. Splitting the day in half. And that's and a different topic. That's topic three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it just in my mind, it ties together because if if we're allowing that to happen, do we also have to let that happen at housey? No. Or it's different because there's a building there? So the question is, is the pavilion and the shelter one rental unit? Currently, that's how we've been presenting it. You get you rent the building, you get the pavilion. Yeah, I think it would be hard if we split it because if you have two parties, where are they going to go to the bathroom? Obviously, like the, it's going to overlap. If we've been doing it that way, it would make sense to me to just keep it that way. That's what I was kind of guessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a bathroom thing. Yeah. yeah. So, so thank you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, could you let? Is it Dan that changes the fee structures? Okay. Uh, and then the third one was, to, to your point, Laura, oh, yeah. that the half days, um, they were looking for guidance as to when the day starts and stops. And I think that um, th it was kind of just picked, and I can't remember what the, what the, ti what the timing was, but it was, it was chunks. And it also needed to be known there would be no cleanup in between a morning rental and an afternoon rental. And as Yes. Is that a, is that a concern? Because it, it won't be able to happen. So Sarah brought that up, and that was one of the topics we talked about at the very end of the meeting, and I think we we're all just trying to get out of the meeting. Um, I think in theory it's a good idea to break it in half. I don't know if in function it is, especially with the cleanup piece of it. And Sarah brought up the point of uh, how do you split up a summer day so that people get to utilize it in the way that they want. Also sounds like a lot more work for city staff and people to manage, so. So do you wanna maintain half day rental at the open air shelters or do you wanna just take it back to full day? Full day. That's my opinion. Yeah. Full day, cause then you don't have to worry about it. People yep. can, you don't have to police anything. Like it mm -hmm. just, in theory, it's a good idea, but in function, it doesn't make sense. And I know we've had long conversations about that in the past, and you brought up the issues, Tim, that those are the, the, there's some <coughs> cleaning issue. And when when does the day start and when does the day end? No, here, this is your part. This is your cost. Yeah, you get it for the day. Yep. So I I, I yep. firmly believe that the intent was fantastic, because <laughs> it cut because it cut the rent in half. Yeah. yeah. It cut the rent in half. Yeah. So I it it made it easy because. It made it much more accessible to everyone with with the fees being cut in half. It, it it the implementation piece can still probably be done, but whoever has the afternoon park, if there was someone using it, they have to recognize that it won't be a no guarantee it'll be a clean space. From an affordability perspective, is that something that we could apply that like nonprofit structure like we would with a fee to, like if they wanted to rent the shelter for something. We um, try to do, I think it was a few years ago, I think it was like last year, we did a project for the library for the um, uh, restaurant and the staff and the So just leave it. Okay, great. Let's just leave it. And by leave it, I mean oh, like not split it anymore. Leave it a whole day? Leave it a whole day, yep. Okay. Right. What else you got, Tim? Thank you. Anything I'm else? I'm done. That's I'm it done. for me, guys. Anybody else? I guess, actually, I do have one more question, but party to left. Just, we're coming to the end of the year. Um, I, we, we've, we went through this in the EDA. I want to ask here um, whether you want to talk about it, whether you want to just talk to Lloyd about it. Um, intent for coming back next year. Whose terms are up? I don't think mine is. I have mine not up. Oh. Um, Larry, yours is oh, yours I'm is up. Pretty sure that I'm not going to come back. Oh. I've uh, got so many things going on that I don't see it as a real option. Spend a lot of time take care of my dad. And, uh, lose a lot of, and then I have grandkids stuff that go on. Mm -hmm. So this will be it for you next month? 
I think it would be good to just to reach out to the group and understand who's still interested, knowing that we have a lot of we have some people whose attendance is low. So um, if, if that's still of an interest to them to attend, because um, I know we've had some people ask about park spots. And I would just love to see that if if Lloyd is is going to leave us or if other people are sorry, oh, sorry, uh, it's late. If Larry's going to leave us, and if we have other people not attending, I'd love to see those spots filled with people who would love to join subcommissions, right. you know? So are you reading my notes? Because that was where I was going to go. So thank you, Sarah. That was... Oh, is it? Okay. That's, that, that's really kind of what, you know, we're looking, looking at a guy. Just because your term is, is up or isn't up, the, in, the interest, the, you know, people's lives are getting busy. There's things going on. Um, just kind of looking... Especially come January or February, if we don't have enough for a quorum, there's not a lot that can get done. Um, so to potentially identify some of this in advance, I think is is good. Um, and if you know somebody who wants to be part of the park and rec, how many of us here are sticking around except Larry for next year? I am. I am. Nance. I don't know. Okay. Fair enough. Well, you'll tell us if our Ooh. term is up or not. I do think we need to look at our attendance policy. We've mm -hmm. talked about yes. it previously. Um, it hasn't improved, and it's a, f a detriment to this commission, and we need to make some decisions around it. The beauty that you have is you're a large commission, so majority of the time there is, there is a quorum. We didn't we, – there was a period of time where we had a heck of a time, and we actually reduced the – the, the commission by by a member to make sure that we could get so again same reason I'm asking is these are tough decisions that we may have to make so you know I look at the list Lloyd Laura Larry got the L's going up front <laughs> uh, Heather Ingrid Sue Nancy Sarah uh, and Arnie I mean you know there are some attendance issues going on here right you know I mean you don't kick somebody out as a volunteer organization but um, is there, there is, is excuse me but there is a a firm policy about this and a way you do it. It laid it. We had to do it on the environmental commission. So, yeah. and we had we had Jill. We had talked about this and brought it up at one of the meetings a while back. And I believe the under the discussion I had brought it up in the discussion was we were kind of just going to leave it as it was because it was a volunteer commission. But if no, I thought we yeah. talked about two attendant two. Yeah. You were given uh, two. Uh, two excused, excused mm -hmm. absences. Um, and, it lay, and it laid off on me. It was the chairperson's decision. That's why I wanted to know how you guys wanted to run it because it was the chairperson's decision as to whether there were, if there were two or more, whatever it was in the policy, was this person going to stick around? And I thought um, in the, the ordinance, and I'll look at the, the commissions because it was like you could have you could miss like six two. meetings or something. It was ridiculous. It was six excused. So yeah. you have to be gone almost like half the time. Um, and all of the, the ones that we have, I think I've only had one unexcused out of all of you. So they've all been excused and I don't think anybody's been gone six times. So since when? Oh, and that was going to be my, it was, that was the other piece to it. Is it an excused or is it not an excused? Right. And, and I mean, if, and who it, if somebody that? tells me they're not going to be here, it's excused because we mm -hmm. decided we weren't really going to. And I wouldn't get hung up on that, Lloyd. I guess I might take a look at those who re you recognize that are here on a consistent basis and those that aren't. Mm -hmm. um, and I might actually ask of you to pick up the phone and say, hey, you know, Okay. Is this something you're still, I don't want to pull the rug out from underneath you. Is this something you're still really interested in attending? Um, you know, being a, being a active member in, if not, this is a perfect opportunity to gracefully step aside because there are others who okay. could, could fill the position, not pressuring, not anything, but just gathering information from uh, a couple of the, a couple of the members. Okay. And then that'll, that it. gives you know that gives you or, or when 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 is elections for you <laughs> is that january february, january. Mm -hmm. so um you know that that gives everybody maybe a little more direct can you even have elections if you don't have a quorum no can't have a meeting without a quorum so i know soren says we don't have a, we have 
It just puts pressure on the rest of these members that are here at this table constantly. Correct. Like, we aren't ever allowed to miss anything because then we feel guilty about yep. that. It just puts a lot on the rest of us. Lauren had told me that if we don't have a quorum, the meeting's done. You can't even start the meeting because you, you can't, can't even start the meeting. Approve it. No. You're done. Huh? I know. <laughs> we just couldn't vote on anything. No. So we, you are going to talk to people? Yes. And that's not a tomorrow thing. That's just sometime between now Joe. and the first of the year. Because um, if I, my my assumption is such that um, all the commissions will probably have vacancies, um, and the new mayor appoints uh, who sits on them as part of uh, that individual's responsibilities. So we will probably put something on the website and in the newsletters that you know, very similar to what was done last year. We have two spots open on this commission and a spot open on that. And, um, you know, I know planning, the, the mayor's coming from planning, so we know there's a spot that's gonna open up on, on the planning commission. Jill, why don't we meet at some point, sometimes set something up and you and I can talk and figure out the appropriate direction. Yeah, okay. But I, I wouldn't get hung up on no. on what the rules say. Just use your gut and base it base it upon attendance and find out has you know has is you know has has the desire slipped a little bit. And that was the understanding when we talked about this last year. At some point, is we don't want to bring the hammer down, no. but just be discreet and polite and professional about it. Hey, yeah. are you interested? If you're not interested, great. We understand. If you are, we'll just keep moving. Now I promise I'm done. Anybody else? But, but if they are, they need. If they are, they need to show up. I don't believe it's okay to say you're still interested and then continue to have extended absences. Right. That's <laughs> that's the problem. Yeah. Excused or unexcused. Because at the end of the day, we have to show up. We have like mm -hmm. we're choosing to show up. We're choosing to do stuff. You don't just get to say you want to do something and still not show up and do so at a detriment to the rest of us who do show up. Can we pull that, can we find that thing? At least find the ordinance <coughs> and see what it says so we have, you and I can go through it. Um, would you like to just, why don't, let, why don't Jill and I just figure it out first and then we'll discreetly work with it on a person-to-person -person basis. Yeah. But I agree with you, Laura. We're here. Some people aren't here. And what does that mean? <laughs> so deep. <laughs> to be or not to be? Wow. The deep, the deep meanings that are coming out of this. All right. Any make, other reports? Any other? I make a motion to adjourn. Second, and I make a second. Um, is there a first Lloyd seconds discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed. I got to do this once. That felt good.